I think that the professional world, especially from a sort of more design and development perspective, it's, it's uh, shrinking. Um, it's becoming slightly more competitive and uh, require a lot of flexibility. Both in terms of the ontological category in which design has been uh, designed, conceived, and how is it practiced. Um, I'm making a quote uh, from a student of, of an alumni that is now working in Kabul after being working in uh, Beirut. Uh, and uh, he got a job in Beirut uh, uh, five days after the graduation, uh, two years ago. And he says, here in Kabul, in the garden of the house where I live, sunset is coming and the muezzin is calling for prayer. I'm thinking of my remote and recent past and how I ended up here in Kabul. Sometimes we question ourselves about which future we are expecting. We study those who did something in the world and those who changed the world. We observe lives of great thinkers and great builders. We listen to the music, we read books, and we think in the message in those. Curiosity makes us travel, observe, and build a vision of the world. The latter, together with our dreams, make us question which role we might play. And I think that the, the professional worlds that emerge from this kind of more romantic, absolutely vision of someone that has passed through the bad uh, experience is actually <clears throat> centered on the need for someone professionally that is able to think out of the box, to question completely the notion of the design as healing machine rather than uh, finding innovative curiosity uh, and innovation about that. Uh, there is a lot of social term, if you want to call it in terms of conventional architectural practice. Uh, there is a lot of internationalization of the work of major practices. Uh, just last year we had three graduates from BUD that are now working. One is in Arab, in Arab, the other two in Fosters and Partner. And the question is, you would say, well, why have they haven't gone through BUD? Why do they go back to this kind of conventional practice? And what they do is probably is they re-question themselves and do the job in a different manner. So intriguing is now is the ontological, is the thinking behind the potential that the design has. And that's why the possibility of building the two world, the design conventional one and the more developmental one per se. <coughs> what is the professional world of development planning? Um, well, I, we heard the word exciting, shrinking, I think that's it's shrinking depending on where you look at it. Obviously, if you look at uh, the definition of more uh, conventional professions, then it's shrinking, but otherwise it's definitely expanding. Um, I agree with Camillo and Leine that it's increasingly competitive. Uh, and I think that there are two other attributes to think about. One is that the world that we are facing as professionals is fast changing. It's, it's absolutely fast changing. So it's very, very difficult for, uh, for you, for us, to keep track with it, to think what are the skills, what are the abilities that we need to confront the new generation of issues. And, and I think that this is where the point from which I want to, to say a few more things. Um, when thinking about the questions that the DM put forward to us, I was thinking this is something that you might be surprised to hear, but we do every year, in the sense that we really think about the, way, the world in which we work every single year. And in the light of that reflection, which helps us to think about where to go in terms of our own action, we also refine and update the content of all our courses. Now, when we do that, I don't think that we take a market approach. I mean, it would be very easy to look at, okay, where is the work uh, you know, uh, uh, happening? If, uh, let's pick the economies and let's look, you know, uh, where are people, what are people being asked for? But I think that we try to keep a much more long-term and strategic perspective. So we're trying to be not market-led in the professionals that we are you know, ho hoping to, to develop uh, and enhance, but much more, if you want, uh, strategic and also visionary. In that sense, what I think that one of the best values that the EPU has, in my view, in terms of the professionals that we form, is precisely that, that they are not responding to the obvious needs of the market, but are responding to the most relevant and urgent current and future problems faced by the world.
professional world in its conventional form is actually much too narrow and much too limited to really address the enormous challenges of urbanization and development and planning that we're going to face in the future. And so, as Adriana said, I think our courses really try to promote the strategic and the visionary and innovative dimensions which we believe, after long debate and discussion, are the kinds of qualities and, and, and thinking that can really address this huge, huge transformation that the world is going through and will continue to go through uh, very dramatically in certain parts of the world. So having said that, it seems to me that actually a lot of the, the, the issues that we're going to face in that world lie outside the current capacity of many of the professions, the so-called professional dimensions of planning. So for example, it's absolutely certain that most cities are going to be, have very, very high proportions of informality. Planning, urban planning, has never been good at dealing with informality, as we all know. And so this is going to become an issue which we have to get an increasing grasp on. Another trend which is increasingly something we face and which is central to all the work we do in the DPU is that communities are no longer just passive recipients. They are mobilizing, they are acting, they are standing up and demanding and making demands for very, very basic rights of decent living to do with housing, water, sanitation, proper education, health, etc. So whatever you do in your future professional life, that is one reality that you have to confront, which is working with increasingly articulate and mobilized communities. When you're going out into that world and you're meeting people and they're talking about jobs, when they look at you, they're not looking at you from the point of view of you know, a neat set of skills which you might be able to tell them that you have. Okay, I can do uh, cost-benefit analysis, or I can do uh, you know, SWOT, or I can do whatever, the tools like that. Okay. I think that the kinds of challenges we face <coughs> need different kinds of things. Skills are good. I'm not saying they're not good. But they are not the be-all and end-all for the kind of challenges we face. And I think one of the most important skills that we raise, anyway, amongst ourselves, in order to, for you to be able to face those kind of huge challenges, is the capacity to analyze and to do diagnosis in a reflexive way, in other words, in a learning way. Okay? And I think that this enables you, which is very valuable for any organization you work with, to position the work that they are doing in relation to much wider debates and ideas and perhaps even plans and projects. Because one thing's for sure, one of the most powerful things to do with that challenge that Etienne talks about is that the world is an incredibly complex place. And defining that complexity and trying to understand where action and intervention fits in the relation to that huge complexity is, is, very, is a great skill. And I certainly hope that that's one of the skills that you're going to be getting more and more into by the end of the course. So being able to position ideas, to draw on wider debates of an understanding of what's going on in the rest of the world and what people are talking about is very important. Being able to think strategically about those ideas and translating that into action is, is extraordinarily important. And being able to bring to bear on that analysis proper evidence, proper understanding of practice that has some basis in a reality, in a concrete reality, your capacity to use data, to justify your arguments on the basis of different experiences, I think is an enormous skill and one which will stand you in enormous stead and will impress anybody that you work with if you do that well. A second thing I think 
which I know is easily said, it's easily said, but the capacity to listen to different voices is something that we try to work very hard with you here in the DPA. In other words, we know that, the, as I said before, the people that you're going to be dealing with in your life are not going to be all policy makers. Or they're not going to be all inter people from international agencies. They're going to be a major range of different kinds of people, with different educational levels, different exposures, uh, different kinds of languages to express themselves. And I think that from the DPU, I really hope, and, and we work very hard towards this, that we begin to help people and to, to develop that capacity to, to listen to a range of different voices in order to make that real in the way you understand the problems of the situation, in the one, way you understand the opportunities there, and the way you think about planned action at whatever level you're working at. The final thing I think is very important, and something again which I know um, is, is emphasized in all our courses, is the confidence and the capacity to communicate. And again, of course, this has to do with many, the range of different actors you're dealing with. But when I'm talking about communication, I'm talking about speaking, presenting, but also writing. Being able to write clearly, clear argument, with good examples, is, I know it's the bread and butter of what you do in the NSC. But it's the bread and butter of what you do in the NSC because it will also be the bread and butter of what you do in your, in your professional lives. And I think these three dimensions are crucial in trying to address some of those problems. I know they sound very basic to you, but believe me, this is what I think makes up or, or can make a difference between choosing you and someone else if you can show capacities in those three areas. Uh, for, for any job you may be involved in in the future. Many thanks, Karen.